Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this time we're, uh, this is an episode with no guests, just the hosts. Uh, Anish, um, it, it's been, I think it was March 7 that we had, uh, you had, I wasn't present, you had uh, Dr. Argyropoulos Christos on. It was the first COVID episode. Yes. Um, I believe it was March, it may have been recorded before then, you know, but you know, early uh, before it, it hit uh, yeah. big time. Um, uh, interestingly, that was before New York became that bad. So he looked like a prophet <laughs> in retrospect, at least for a while, uh, because it, you know, things turned out bad, pretty bad, pretty quickly. What are your, uh, at least for New York, um, you know, we, 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 we're going to talk here a little bit about uh, the situation now, the lockdowns, uh, uh, all those questions, things that are on our minds. Um, uh, but you, if I, if I recall correctly, you were in favor of lockdowns at the time, right? When, when there was, uh, um, you know, in view of what had happened in Italy and, and China and so forth. I think I was ambivalent. I wasn't sure what to think. Um, I mean, on the one hand, I, I, you know, I sort of, uh, with my libertarian sort of, uh, 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 sympathies um, was against it. Uh, at the same time, I was concerned about the severity of the virus, and and for a while I, I didn't know what to think. And so, um, wh what are your thoughts looking back? I mean, was that uh, uh, do you still hold to the idea that we should have locked down back that back when we did, and and that uh, and and now we, we probably shouldn't anymore, or? Yeah, I mean, um, I think uh, it was March. Uh, it was March 11th, and it was pretty clear at that point that New York was going to get hit uh, hit pretty hard. Um, and uh, it, Italy had just Italy had, of course, the last two weekends. Italy had, you know, really, uh, you know, there were pictures coming out of there were pretty terrible, and lots of people on ventilators. And again, so um, the idea at the time it seemed like. Uh, what was gonna what played out in Italy was gonna play out in New York and it was gonna play out all over the United States. That's what that's what that's what the concern was. And I recall, you know, and part of the reason, part of the reason, you know, before March and February, or, you know, yeah, sorry, in February, January, when folks were saying how worried they were about the virus, I just kind of remember thinking that. I just kind of remember thinking that the um, um, it must have already been here. It must have not come here in any significant uh, intensity. You know, SARS-CoV-1, this happened. We didn't really see it. And it was probably had run through the population and it was gone. That's what, that's what I was hoping. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I kept saying, I, kept, I remember kept think, I kept saying that, you know, my practice is next to Chinatown in Philadelphia. You know, why are where are all these cases, and why are I not why are we not seeing this? Um, you know, so I thought maybe it was over, and and clearly, and then when Italy blew up, it was this dawning realization that it wasn't China travel and <laughs> China associated, uh, you know, seeding mm -hmm. that was concerning. It was the fact that. Europe had gotten massively seeded, and we had not done anything to stop any travel and stuff from Europe. So the idea was is that we could have massively seeded any number of places all across the United States. So so yeah. So in March 11th, when he talked, I was like, my goodness, clearly seems the case that we need to we need to we didn't know what the levels of community transmission were across the United States, and we needed to lock down to figure that out, and so that and try to prevent what was happening in New York and Italy. Um, so, so yeah, that was my thought then. Now it turns out within two or three weeks after, you know, that episode in New York completely blew up. Um, but it also turned out that the vast majority of the country was not like New York, the COVID epidemic, the U sorry, the epidemic of COVID in the U S was really a New York story. I remember being so frustrated because story after story after story in the New York times, day after day, I would check the New York times, which I never do. And day after day, they would be talking about the COVID pandemic in the U.S., the COVID pandemic in the U.S. And I was like, guys, you're the New York Times. This is the story is that it's happening in New York City and it's not happening everywhere else. When they would interview Cuomo in those 
press conferences. The, the constant thing was that this is going to happen everywhere. You know, we will, you know, everyone help us now because we will return the help uh, when it's needed. Um, and that was the idea. And so, you know, I was, I was in favor of the lockdown, certainly in March, mid-March to figure out what the level of spread across the country was. And then it just, everything just kind of completely went off the rails. I mean, it should have taken, you know, everyone locked down, schools, NBA, you know, massive panic, which was fine. And then, but two weeks, two, and it is this whole two week time frame. It was constantly like waiting two weeks, waiting two weeks, waiting two weeks. Like, all right, mm-hmm. we waited two weeks. We, we figured out there wasn't this much transmission and nothing happened. Everything just kept staying the same. Every, everyone kept locking down. It's like, what is the metric to figure out when we should, when we should start to f- open up again? And but there was did, never any right. But didn't it. didn't you think that? Um, um, I mean, the, the, the I, I imagine that the, the the sentiment in in the places like California, which which was really pretty spared, you know, Los Angeles, uh, San Jose yeah. were a yeah. little bit hotter, but San Francisco was really spared at the time. And, um, and that, you know, the rationale was that they had been spared because they had locked down so quickly, which yeah. in retrospect, I mean, you it's know, true. you don't know what to think because it seemed plausible on the one hand, on yeah. the other hand, it probably wasn't. I mean, it probably, I don't think it's, it's the timing of the lockdown that made a difference between, although it's, it's, it's hard to know. Yeah, well, it's, it's probably the case that New York was heavily seeded for whatever stochastic right, reason in terms right. of travel. And exactly. It was not. And again, the frustrating thing in terms of watching this go out real time was that we refused to allow the virus to be snuffed out, at least in the United States, within New York. We allowed New York to freely emigrate all over. Um, you know, travel, you know, there's all these, this video I tweeted about cell phone, <laughs> cell mm-hmm. phones, you know, signals from two days of, of travel, of two days of people in New York and where they went over the next two weeks. And literally it just goes all over the United States. Um, so, you know, it, it was, it was, it was, it was in retrospect, it's such a silly, silly, silly thing to do. If you really wanted to snuff it out, you snuff it out in New York. Don't allow anything to leave and get out of New York. And, uh, but, but do, you think, to, do you think that's possible? I mean, I, I, uh, I, I can't imagine. I mean, well, you kept, I mean, I mean, if you, if you shut down JFK and LaGuardia, um, that's, I mean, people leave by if you car. Shut down, people. If you shut down every major highway, um, why not? <laughs> but again, no, I don't see why, why. If you want to do that, then that's what you need to do. Now, now here's the thing. It turns out that this virus was so, I mean, it's a pandemic. So, so across the globe, it seeded everywhere. It ended up in Brazil, ended up in Mexico. Right. So it seems, now looking back, you know, I was really frustrated that New York was allowed at the time to like continuously seed everywhere. And this was before the, you know, Travis uh, Bedford, the genealogist, virology, mm-hmm. who, I, don't, I don't know what he is exactly, but he's, he looks at the sequences and figures out, you know, where it's coming from and stuff. And, you know, even before it was obvious that this was, that a country was being seeded by New York. But as you know there's so much to learn as the thing kept fold, unfolding it's like well it, it's like whack-a-mole like you know you whacked travel from china uh, and and countries that were affected there and so you didn't get seating from there but you didn't you didn't do europe so then so europe seated you but if we even if we had done europe <laughs> then mexico and brazil would have been seated india would have been seated or something right and we would have had traveling from there so unless the United States, which is an incredibly heavily traveled to nation, had just shut off borders until it, this snuffed out mm-hmm. all across the globe. There was, no, there was never going to be a way to keep it out of the U.S. in these various things. So in retrospect, yeah, in retrospect, it seems like you had to try to control the burn a little bit and not have New York style, New York type deaths. And by the way, that is what's happening now. You're having COVID run through in a, in, a, in a reasonably sized way in Florida and Texas. And you're having the number of deaths compared to New York to be much, 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 much less. So, so yeah, so, but, but I'm not sure how, I mean, how does that relate to what, what you're just saying? Because why would that affect the virulence of, of the, uh, 
why oh, is that the, 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 the lethality of the virus yeah i mean it why, seems why? that the virus was very lethal i mean of course you know compounding the problem was the fact that testing was not all that prevalent back early on right i mean there was this huge issue about not having enough yeah testing to go around right to right. know what to do and to know what to uh um, right. but, but I, you're you asking know, why why do you think why do you think the virus the lethality changed is that what the question is yeah i mean if you're thinking that it's the, the it's less lethal because it's less it's less it was introduced in a more gradual way in those areas i right. um, it, i don't it, know sure. why why it, would that it, it it's possible that by the time it, it by the time it was introduced and again i don't think this i don't think necessarily we needed to wait till mid july to have this happen in texas and mm -hmm. um, and uh, and, and florida or wherever across the country now actually uh, this could have been something we tried to do in a controlled burn fashion in you know <laughs> uh, i mean they were talking march now we're talking we could have done that in mid april you know why not because we essentially right. it seems like we delayed this controlled burn until until you know mid june which means it just it just prolonged the whole I it. right sure but i mean it seems like virulence wise you know perhaps we you know perhaps having many more people wearing masks. I know, I know the left is incredibly upset that there isn't a mask mandate. It's like everywhere, look, people are wearing masks and you know, everyone wants to focus on these viral videos of groups of people or whatever, not mm -hmm. wearing, not wearing masks, but whatever, there's, there's much more masking going on. It's not perfect, but much more masking happening there. There's certainly a lot more, you know, awareness from everyone, you know, individually people mm -hmm. are doing lots of things that are different. It's not just Sweden that's doing things different on a personal level. There are lots and lots and lots of Americans beyond you know the young kids that are at bars and having orgies and beaches or whatever <laughs> there's, there's that's not the average uh, attitude right. and, and thing that americans are doing there americans have made massive changes there's much less mobility etc so so maybe all those things somehow protect the the most vulnerable in texas and and florida also i think it's absolutely the case that the intubate first strategy that was was uh, you know that that took place and that, that we kind of learned from mm -hmm. The, the the Italian or in terms of you know the panic about there was this massive panic about having to deal with this highly lethal virus and you have somebody that comes in and is hypoxic and you don't want them crashing because then you're going to infect the, all the people that are dealing with a crashing patient who's in respiratory failure so once they're you're intubate them already right yeah. yeah once their juice ads drop even if they're on the phone get them off the phone and intubate them and get control of the situation which is what we normally do in many other cases but in this particular case this particular virus it turns out that it's very hard to ventilate these people. You, they end up on sedation and paralytics. Nobody wants to go in their rooms to kind of get them off sedation and paralytics. Again, this is early mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people are panicked. And you have these units full of zombies uh, who are who are just, you know, it, it's taking them. And, and, and of course, having zombies on ventilators is automatically a very morbid condition that, that has its own morbidity, even beyond mm -hmm. the respiratory illness. So it's certainly there, of course, from death severe steroids. I mean, you know, who knows what, what, what amount of that is causing it. But it's probably a combination of being able to protect our vulnerable citizens much more, plus these, you know, these management, this management stuff that we've, that we've learned. It's really interesting that, you know, we always assume that Wuhan was hiding a lot of deaths, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 it is, of course, now possible that Wuhan didn't hide a lot of deaths. It's just that Wuhan is, has limited resources compared to you know, the thousands of ventilators that exist in the, the small square mileage of New York and simply not having <laughs> ventilators meant that, well, sorry, we can't intubate you because there's no ventilator. And, uh, you know, maybe the number of deaths is closer to accurate. We thought, given the New York numbers, that there's no way China must be hiding tons of deaths. Right. Um, in, you know, India, same thing, uh, poorly resourced, you know, you know, they don't have a lot of uh, don't have a lot of ventilators. Of course, India is also complicated by the fact that only 3% of their population is over the age of 70. And most of the mortality <laughs> right. is seen in people over the age of 70. So, you know, the United States is so awesome at keeping people alive beyond 70. And then once they get beyond 70, we put we warehouse them in, not to upset anyone, but we put them in these dorms of, of, of nursing of homes, right. elder care right. homes, mm -hmm. and this virus just runs through, runs through there. So, you know, it, it, you know all those all those different things may affect affect uh, affect you know differential differential mortality rates that were that were that we're seeing but no question i think you know we we, we we certainly have learned a lot i just it's just frustrating to see that 
Well, so what's what's going on still? I mean, uh, and, and I, I I don't know if I um, if I'm 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 biased or colored by the experience here because here it seems that we're still. I mean, we're not we're still on some degree of lockdown. Yeah. Um, for sure, you know, restaurants, you know, things like that. And Are restaurants rest allowed to have indoor seating? No. No, no indoor no. dining. Yeah, yeah, as far as that, you know, I mean, we have two kids, we hardly ever go outside. <laughs> right, right, right. I haven't checked, but last I checked, I think there, there's no indoor dining, there's no, you know, the hair salons, the things like that. Okay. Churches, churches are really, uh, they, they really clamp down on churches, at least in San Francisco. So it's county, county by county. Right, right, right. But, right. Um, um, uh, so, so that's, um, that's ongoing. And, and, and we'll, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't foresee that it will. You guys um, still have a lot, despite all that, it's interesting. You still, I mean, uh, of course, that this is a second lockdown now you're going through or something like akin to a second lockdown. You kind of started to open up. And then right, right, right. And, you know, you guys were, I don't know, I haven't checked recently, but you guys were somewhere at 10, 000, more than 10,000 new cases a day, at some point, uh, despite, you know, it being California yeah. and, and doing things. Possibly Correct. Correct. But, so the, but the numbers again, are high, the number, but the, the mortality is still is still very yeah, low, right? Yeah, number of deaths, hospitalizations is very low. Now, it could be that it's it's because you know the future Surgeon General of the United States is uh, you know the head of the hospital system at UCSF. <laughs> maybe <laughs> right. maybe he 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 he's he's the one that's somehow controlling these mortality numbers. But uh, but but the point is, you're seeing very low mortality numbers all across the the different states. You're seeing. You know, um, uh, New York, uh, New York has 32, had 32,000 deaths um, in a state of 20 million people. Uh, Florida has, at this point, uh, 7,000 deaths in a state of 21 million. Um, and uh, Texas has uh, uh, 7,000 deaths in a state of 29 million. Um, it, cer it certainly looks like the cases have peaked and are coming down in Florida and in Texas. And, uh, you know, the expectation is that deaths pretty soon will start to come down. The peak number of deaths they had in Florida so far till t t to today, now it's going to go up a little bit, but the peak number of deaths on a daily basis that they've had is 140 deaths in Florida. In New York at its peak, there were a thousand deaths a day. Mm -hmm. um, so huge, huge, hugely different uh, numbers in terms of mortality, which, which the frustrating part, part that I'm coming to is, is that, you know, that should really impact how we as a society deal with virus uh, sorry deal with deal with you know mitigating this virus if, if, if it's the case that you know yeah. Texas have been open for a while and have this low have these low numbers florida has never really locked down and has not seen mega death type numbers then hey but uh, didn't they do a few things you know three four weeks ago to essentially explain why it's coming down now didn't they just um, i mean they they did a few things i mean they they uh i remember the governor started wearing a mask in in conference maybe <laughs> right. conference, yeah, cor correctly but, uh, correctly he learned he learned yeah. from the epidemiologist yeah. how to tie his yeah. mask right yeah yeah well whatever what, i mean what, whatever i mean it's of course you're the one who raised the point really really early on i think in mid-march itself saying that maybe all these curves <laughs> these curves all look the same to me right uh, they go up, they go down. Different, different systems, different countries, different whatever. It doesn't seem to really impact. Yeah, although I, I'm not so. So of course now we hear about you know there's a great deal of interest about uh, herd immunity occurring sooner than people yeah. anticipated. Yeah. Right. So that's that's one thing, and I think that's plausible. Um, but I'm not completely sold on it. I mean, I think it's. Because yeah. at the same time, you know, while you have this, I mean, it's plausibly the people who, who um, poo poo the idea of her, that herd immunity is playing a role now will say, no, listen, you know, this is really primarily a behavioral change, and right. whether it's imposed by by um, yeah. by governments or whether it's self imposed by the by the people, it's, it's really primarily a behavioral change that needs to right. remain, because if we don't, then then you'll have numbers going up again, and I don't know that we can say for sure one way or another. Right, right, um, right. No, you're absolutely right. It could be that we're that we're in the middle of in the middle of a first and second wave. And but here's the th here's the weird. Yeah, I, I guess the strange part about this is that um, we, uh, you know, what is it about these things that makes it disappear for a while and then come back? Because certainly in the 1918 pandemic, you know, we've seen that first, second wave and stuff. 
um, you know, those guys shut down for like two weeks. Now, of course, their death rates were much, much, much higher. But they shut down for two weeks, and and then they started circulating again, and this thing then came back in, and the came back again in the fall. Yeah, several months later. So so it's so that's that's really remarkable. So it, what's interesting is that this COVID makes us has made us re-question so many things, so many right. assumptions. So right, that pandemic of 2018. You know, so even what we th- even what we think we know about the flu, this question of seasonality, yeah. Uh, yeah. is it really the? Se- I mean, is it is it because yeah. of the warm weather? I mean, how do we yeah. know? How do we know that yeah. it's not something else? Yeah, is and, it something? Yeah, yeah. Was it a and, different? Was it a different strain? We have right. no idea. We have no idea, and, and how would we know? We 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 can't know for sure. Um, yeah. Except except after the fact. I mean, and you would need you know some pretty good data. So. Why did the flu behave the way it did in, yeah. in, in 18, you know, 1918, right. 19, 19, 19, yeah. 18, 19, 19, with these three distinct waves? Right. So, so that makes you think that maybe it wasn't herd immunity. There's something else that makes these things come and go. So is it behavioral? And so the alarmists, you know, the ones that are in favor of, of continued okay. lockdown and continued, you know, imposed behavioral change yeah. would say that. And... Yeah. You know, it's possible. Yeah, but here's it's the possible. thing. So, uh, right, go ahead. Even if, even if you, so even, I mean, that's of course, yeah, that's of course plausible. I mean, that's the thing, like, you know, these people that argue, that argue about these things, it, it's not that, it's not that no one's acknowledging that there's a risk of these things happening. It's just that, look, in my mind, we have, we have gone, no, we, I guess, you know, the, the people before us have shed blood and have the, and shed the blood of right. legions of young 25 year old or you no know, 18 to 22 year olds in, in in these massive wars just so that the people at home can go to movies and go to work and go to football live. games and right. etc yeah right. live exactly right. right right so why why have we been why are we thinking about why are we such a, a nation of absolute ninnies i mean yes why are we not taking this taking this as much on the chin as, 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 as we need to, to continue to survive. I yeah. mean, no, that's live, a, but... Correct. That's a very, very interesting. I mean, and I think I, I firmly believe in what you're saying. I mean, not necessarily that we're, we're ninnies, but that we've, ex- so this expectation now, this, this complete lack of tolerance for any death for, right. I mean, this complete risk aversion, yeah. And interestingly, it's not, it's not new. It's been sort of building up over the last 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, whole, much of medicine now, what we learn in medicine, it's all about risk aversion, right? Risk yeah. avoidance. It's right. all about risk mitigation, risk this, risk right. that. And, um, and so that's why, you know, that's why I, 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 I think it's terrible. I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a suicide mission because it, it weakens us yeah. in many different ways. We become... Um, distrustful of one another we can't live together anymore and it's and and so that now looking so looking back after a period for me where i was i was sort of um, ambivalent about what to do you know i think late april may i decided that no i mean lockdowns should uh, lockdowns are wrong and and are wrong sort of on principle yeah um, from from the get-go um almost regardless of the numbers yeah um, yeah but uh, but it, it, so but well, it's, still, it's, it's a hard be, it's a hard sell yeah go ahead yeah well let's be clear when you say lockdowns are meaning you're saying centrally guided directed lockdowns if you want to if you individually want to shut yourself in your basement for eight months please feel free go ahead right right and, uh, yeah and, it, and it, but the, correct but the state mandating lockdowns things like what the what the what the uh, some montgomery county uh, official in uh, you know some DC suburb is saying that uh, well public schools are, are are shut down but uh, no private schools are also not allowed to open. This kind of stuff is just ridiculous. I mean you know the, the state. I think we should never lock down again ever. We should never ever right. have these people control when we should lock down. We should let it be on on the individuals and the organizations. Let them let's try to give them as much information as we can. And, uh, and and do it. And you know, there's going to be bad information, good information. Fine. Let them let them let them parse that and decide. If the NBA makes a bad decision to 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 lock down early or not lock down enough, blah blah blah. They'll you know, get punished, you know, right? They're gonna, yeah, they're going to get they're going to get. Punished. And and the thing is, you know, a lot of these people are smart, and there's a lot of money 
riding on the line. And I think uh, you know they're going to make they're probably going to end up making better decisions um, than some idiot bureaucrat. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, that, that's why. Right. I mean, right. So, so the the government. I mean, I think it's been clear that it doesn't have any more information or any better wherewithal about how to do these things than. Yeah. And society, if that's if society was left to its own devices, right. and and I'm, I'm I'm definitely with you. It, it's not my argument is not a um, uh, individual rights uh, libertarian position. So I'm not I'm not against lockdowns because I think people have the right to do whatever they want individually, and nobody mm -hmm. can tell them what to do. I'm against lockdowns because I think it's I think they're bad for society. Yeah, I think they're yeah. bad for society, and we have to learn to to realize that. Um, it's very important that, that we learn to live together, even if it means that death will occur during pandemics. Right. And so to yeah. expect the government to, to, give it, to, go, to give to the government the task of ensuring that as few people die or whatever the magic number yeah. is, because obviously we tolerate people dying right. of other things. But here, so it immediately invites, right, the politics, I mean, the politics immediately get into it. Yeah. I mean, there's no way yeah. around it. There's absolutely no yeah. way around it. So the moment you let the government, you give the government the authority or, right, the authority or, or even the duty, the duty to protect our lives individually, yeah. uh, it's a disaster. Yep. So, so there, should be, there should never be any lockdown, but, but the, the, you know, the, uh, what it means really in essence is there should not be a public health yes. department, right? Because yes. you, can't, you can't start by having... Uh, yeah. The ability to you know to do it halfway, yeah. right? I mean, it's yeah, it's yeah, uh, yeah. it has to be on principle, right? right that right, that right. we that we decide that this is not something that the government ought to do, right? That it's it's really left to, uh, and I think if if it were left to our own responsibility, we would do it much much better, much you know more humanely. It wouldn't be so political, and uh, and it'd be. Uh, that's uh, why it's so. That's why I find it so interest so hilarious. That's very well said. That's exactly right. Um, and, and that's the logical conclusion is that public health can exist, but they should exist in some place where they make some recommendations and everyone is free to ignore them. <laughs> which, which they right. Like. right, 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 correct. Um, but yet people are still, you know, July, or it's August, it's August 1st. Mm -hmm. And people think, our, m most of our colleagues seem to think that if we'd only listened to the scientists, all of this would have been avoided. What other, what other, what, what other baloney <laughs> that is? Like, what evidence do you have? Vietnam, which is now, you know, trying to, you know, shut down and, or the parts, they're trying to transfer 80,000 people in a tourist town, uh, you know, somewhere else. You know, uh, again, New Zealand, uh, which, which, which is an island, which, uh, you know, is, it can, can control who comes in there. New Zealand, which at its peak ever saw 400 flights in a day, right. you know, and they can maybe control things for, for a while. Um, and and uh, what, what, uh, how, how do you measure, how do you measure success and what time frame, right? So, right. I mean, right. it may be that New Zealand looks great now, but right. if New Zealand stays locked down for another year yeah. or two, I mean, how are they going to look, you know, down the line? I mean, we, so, so you can't really use these uh, utilitarian, you know, sort of measures. And, and there's a lot of unhappiness uh, with the lockdown that you have to take into account. You have to, you have to understand. I mean, yeah. Not to, not taking into account is that you plug it into the equation because there's no equation to speak of. There's no possible right. equation to speak of. It's just that it's, um, we just have to learn to live together and, and clearly locking down just by virtue of the fact that it identifies essential versus non-essential func you know, yep. functions, which is completely bogus. I mean, there's no, it, it, it sounds very superficially reasonable, right. but when you analyze it, it, it really doesn't hold. I mean, yeah. the moment you say somebody is unessential, you really, you, yeah. you've made them second class citizen. It means yeah. that they, they can be poor, they can lose their money, they can, they can this. Now, of course, we're in a, still for, for now, we're a country where we can print money and, and give those people, yeah. right, paychecks to stay home. Right. But at the same time, it's so demoralizing fundamentally and it's so undermines how we live yeah. together. That yeah. it's, it's, um, yeah. 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 it's yeah. a real tragedy. Yeah, the idea that, I mean, again, this has never happened before. And the, and the folks that are promoting continued massive changes in how we, you know, socially exist, uh, to, uh, for them to have the utter arrogance to think that this may not have massive consequences 
given that we've mm -hmm. never tried this before mm -hmm. for this long with this scale. I mean, there's so many things. I mean, it's, it's, it's plausible. I mean, if we're saying it's plausible, there's a second wave. It's also plausible that keeping children out of circulation for an extended period of time is bad for children so that when the children do enter into, you know, into right. socializing again, that things are much worse for them. Right. Um, we have no idea. And right, we're just, exactly. We're, just, we're experimenting, yeah. We're just massively experimenting with, with all, this, all this stuff, and it's really, really terrible. The other, the other aspect that, that's, that's also very frustrating is that we focus so much on, on, on uh, case positive. Well, we're, we're also we're, we're schizophrenic. At one point, we're focusing on, oh, my God, deaths. one point, we're focusing on, oh, my God, new cases. Uh, oh, hospitalizations. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, a, a school opened. There's a New York Times article today. A school opened. And uh, public health called saying a patient, uh, kid has COVID and that's it. School has schools. Mm -hmm. It's like, what mm -hmm. are we talking about? Like, really? I mean, do we expect that schools when they open are not going to have COVID positive cases? Uh, do we expect to shut down because there'll be one, two, three, four cases? Even if as a community nationally, we open up schools and some of the schools have to close because there are vast big outbreaks in those schools. Is that a failure if 98% of schools uh, you know, if, if the large majority of schools stay open, I mean, let let the you know let people let people make these judgments, right. and let's not scare and terrify people so much. Like this Georgia camp, like there's tons of daycares that are that have been running now for the last X number of months. Um, we haven't heard massive outbreaks. There's one there's one Georgia camp that we don't quite understand. We should try to investigate, try to figure out how exactly this happened, why did this happen, what's the anomaly. But the idea that we should Focus everything. Uh, focus all policy on worst possible cases is really an utterly ridiculous. Yeah, yeah right. But actually, you know, we 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 we're, we're, <laughs> we we shouldn't test. Yeah. We shouldn't test. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, I mean, we uh, this idea that surveillance is makes any difference, uh, I think is flawed. We yeah. shouldn't test. The only the only important signal is what happens to hospitals. Right, and that's right. what that, that's what that's so, what Texas and Florida showed us. Correct, exactly, <laughs> so exactly. Nobody, so, care, nobody cared about right. cases anymore because oh, now we have so much right. testing, right. we can't compare. Right, it right, right. So this idea that you know, and I think you, you called attention to it uh, a couple of months ago, of of this, but you called attention to it more on a technical, uh, with a technical critique that you said that you know we with the the false positive and false negatives are. But I'm saying we shouldn't test whatsoever because again, it should be clinical medicine. You should test people when they're sick to figure out what they have so you can treat them, <laughs> right? Right, right, and, right? And short of that, this sort of testing contact and, you know, to yeah. uh, uh, allegedly prevent spread of the yeah. thing and whatnot, it's creating panic. It's creating, it's, it's giving yeah. fodder to the, to the yeah. media to, to, to uh, you know, to, to run these, these uh, stories, you know, these alarmist stories. Uh, and, and we shouldn't test at all. We should test yeah. only if it's medically indicated. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. but but the problem is we have a public health system, and and of course right. they're gonna they're gonna test, right? They're gonna yeah, test. It's their way of, yeah, it's yeah, their yeah. it's their way of feeling like there's some they have some control over it by right. recommending right. tests. Exactly, so, exactly. And they just won't stop. Now it's like we must test everyone every day. Right, right. We have test every day. Saliva <laughs> test every day. Like it's like what, I thought you were saying how awesome Vietnam was. Is that what Vietnam is doing? It's, it's, what, what are you talking about? It's oh, and then the, yeah. the other lovely thing is oh the NBA can do it. So. And so therefore, why can't the United States do it? It's like the NBA <laughs> literally created a bubble and suspends people mm -hmm. if they leave that bubble. How are you going to do that? Right. Like, you crazy people. They, I they, right. I don't know either, but, um, but we'll see. I mean, I'm not, I'm not very optimistic. I don't know what to... What to uh, it's just because, as you said, it's a, it's a mentality. It's just, you know, there are expectations now. We, we're, we're sort of been conditioned to this risk avoidance, risk aversion. Each time there's a fatality, a mortality, it can be just blown out yeah. of proportion. And there's no way to, 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 to consider it in its proper context, right? It's just, you know. Right, right. right. So, well, we are, but, we are going to be regarded as the new flu bros, apparently. You know? right. <laughs> so be it, yeah. so be it. <laughs> Anything else? We will. I, 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 I'm just sick and tired of this, but I, I think we keep, we have to keep on talking about COVID because it's, uh, you know, there's no. <laughs> well, we have some other good uh, podcasts coming out. Uh, we do. We hopefully, do. Hopefully, this thing is. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. You know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping that, that, that success, will, will quell the panic. I'm hoping that, you know, the longer that Sweden goes, that a problem. Longer that, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, New York City goes without 
whatever happening, right? I mean, New York City is going to probably open schools, right, in some fashion or the other, because you know they're they're at such a low incidence rate. I'm hoping right. that. You know, I mean, uh, uh, correct. I mean, I think Florida. it will be, it, it will because this is so unnat un unnatural. Right, this right, is so weird. Right, right. It, it is so weird that yeah. I think, you know, the natural state of being is going to, you know, return right, eventually. Right, right. Yeah. But absolutely. with a lot of uh, damage in the meantime. Yeah, well, I, yeah, well one can only hope that yeah. um, some of the elite uh, technocrats will be paid attention to less after this and then we'll all be right. healthier <laughs> right let's hope so all right sir excellent all right denise thank you thanks